Ray Dalio is one of the most inspirational investors and entrepreneurs of our time. Despite his humble upbringing, the son of a jazz musician and a homemaker in Queens, New York, he worked hard to find his way, ultimately being recognized as one of Time Magazine's 100 most influential people on earth. He built what is today the world's largest hedge fund, Bridgewater Associates, which now employs more than 1,500 people and was listed by Fortune Magazine as one of the top five most influential private companies in the United States. According to Forbes, his net worth is estimated at around $20 billion. But Dalio's path to financial stardom was not a straight line up and to the right. You see, throughout his career, he's made many mistakes, some on a very public stage. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mitchell, it's a great pleasure and a great honor to be able to appear before you in examination with what is going wrong with our economy. The economy is now flat, teetering on the brink of failure. You were recently quoted in an article. You said, I can say this with absolute certainty because I know how markets work. I can say with absolute certainty that if you look at the liquidity base in the corporations and the world as a whole, that there's such a reduced level of liquidity that you can't return to an era of stagflation. Arrogant? I was incredibly arrogant. I couldn't have been more wrong. That was, that was the exact bottom in the stock market. And we had this decade of success and it was extremely painful. I lost money for um, me. I lost money for clients. I lost so much money that I had to borrow $4,000 from my dad to pay for my family bills. I had to let people go. Um, it was really terrible. Breaking points like this, even smaller failures, and on a far less public stage, have been the downfall of many potential greats throughout history. But Dalio proved different. He was able to move past that embarrassing low he experienced in his mid-30s and build the investment empire we recognize as his today. In this video, we're gonna analyze what Dalio learned from this pain that ultimately made him so successful in investing and business and how we can easily apply those same principles in our own investing strategies and lives in general. It was really terrible, but it turned out to be um, probably one of the best things that happened in my life because it changed my approach to decision-making. In other words, it uh, gave me a humility, a fear of being wrong, that was to go with my audacity. A repeated theme you'll see throughout all of Dalio's works is his uncanny ability to learn from his mistakes. After interviewing him for his fourth installment of his Market Wizards series, Jack Schwager summarized, if there is a single essential lesson to learn from Dalio, it is that mistakes provide the path to improvement and ultimate success. Each mistake offers an opportunity to learn from the error and to modify one's approach based on this new information. Whenever you make a significant mistake in trading, write it down, both to reinforce the lesson and to serve as a future reminder. Then change your trading process based on this new experience. In this way, mistakes can become the essential ingredient for continual improvement as a trader, or for that matter, any other endeavor. Everyone makes mistakes, some small, some large. The difference between many successful people and their counterparts is their ability to embrace this life lesson. The idea of never ceasing learning from your inevitable mistakes. Dalio says, I learned that there's an incredible beauty to mistakes because embedded in each mistake is a puzzle and a gem that I could get if I solved it, i.e. a principle that I could use to reduce my mistakes in the future. I learned that each mistake was probably a reflection of something that I was or others were doing wrong. So if I could figure out what that was, I could learn how to become more effective. While most others seem to believe that mistakes are bad things, I believe mistakes are good things because I believe that most learning comes via making mistakes and reflecting on them. If you're interested in being a successful investor, this is absolutely key. Whether you're trying to invest full time or whether you're just trying to make sure you figure out the best way to allocate your own retirement funds, you will make mistakes along the way. To this end, Dalio would keep a journal of every trade he made. He diligently recorded his logic before, his observations throughout, and his thoughts after he exited each and every trade 
a discipline his firm still follows today. Dalio openly recounts examples of his early trading and investing failures to demonstrate the evolution of the way he approaches investing, but we'll save some of those examples for a video specifically about the investing lessons we can learn from his life and experiences. So let me know in the comments how interested you'd be in that video. But in order to master learning from your mistakes, you'll have to first learn to be truly honest with yourself. The thing that I learned the best, and I learned from failure, I learned from my failure. 1982, um, I um, expected a big debt crisis that was gonna cause problems. That was the back the bottom in the stock market, I couldn't have been wrong, more wrong. And that gave me the humility to realize that I, what I think in my head or what any one individual thinks in their head might be wrong. Had he been honest with himself before his congressional testimony and before that interview, he would have acknowledged and accepted the possibility that he could be wrong. You have to identify and not tolerate your problems. A lot of people tolerate problems. And then you have to diagnose those problems to get at the root cause of those problems. And often the root cause is you. Maybe you have weaknesses. Maybe you make mistakes. We all have strengths and weaknesses. And the power of being able to know our strengths and weaknesses and know how to w deal with them is enormous. And only when you know what your problems are and you diagnose that specifically, can you create a design to get around those problems? Now, when you're honest with yourself about your weaknesses, about your human frailties, you acknowledge your potential to be wrong, no matter how much research you may have done, or, or no matter that all the logic might be on your side, you still could be wrong. I've been called out in some of my videos in the past for not taking a hard enough stance on whether I believe the market or, or some individual stock will go up or down one way or the other. This is the reason why. Perhaps it was from studying Dalio early on in my career or just from learning from my own many mistakes that I realized this about myself and anyone. I've discovered the importance of, even if I believe some particular scenario to be the most likely thing to happen, of still considering and preparing for other potential outcomes. That's a big part of what I talk about in my book. The potential for the mainstream investment paradigm, the stock and bond buy and hold strategy to be wrong, despite how logical it all may seem. By being honest with yourself about whatever conclusions you come to throughout your life, you'll be able to avoid the dangers of acting with false confidence. Dalio explains, most school education is a matter of following instructions. Remember this, give it back. Did you get the right answer? It teaches you that mistakes are bad instead of teaching you the importance of learning from mistakes. It doesn't address how to deal with what you don't know. Anyone who has been involved in the markets knows that you can never be absolutely confident. There is never a trade that you know you are right on. If you approach trading that way, then you will always be looking at, at where you might be wrong. You don't have a false confidence. You value what you don't know. I'm so worried that I may be wrong that I work really hard at putting my ideas out in front of other people for them to shoot down and tell me where I may be wrong. That process helps me be right. It's not hard to find people in the world of investing or, or anywhere for that matter who operate with this false confidence, who have no tolerance for an opposing viewpoint, who are not open-minded. Most of the profits that people have in real estate are going to vanish, just like the profits in the, in the, in the dot coms in 1999-2000. It's a fantasy. People can't sell their house. The inventories are exploding all over the country. Houses are on the market for six months a year. There's no bidders. So, uh, the price right. is going to fall through the floor. You guys I, are deluding yourself. We heard it. Six months average. We heard it loud and clear. Proceeding with false confidence ruined countless investors in 2008. You may find it easier early on in your life to embrace this and do it well. But the further you get in your career, the more of a perceived expert you are, the more difficult it becomes to be honest with yourself and operate in this way. The more expert you become, the more people are looking to you to have all the answers. The more tempting it will be to blame others or outside forces for your failures. A big reason Dalio didn't flounder or even plateau earlier in his career, as many do, was his willingness to and insistence on accepting responsibility. 
One rule from an early iteration of Bridgewater's principles stated, people who blame bad outcomes on anyone or anything other than themselves are behaving in a way that is at variance with reality and subversive to their progress. Dalio is known now for saying that pain plus reflection equals progress. The more you're able to acknowledge and experience the pain of being wrong, of making a mistake, and then consequently reflect on that in order to learn from it, the more you'll be able to progress. In other words, if you do not accept responsibility for any of the mistakes that you will inevitably make, you cannot truly progress. The final way Ray Dalio ensures that he is able to continually grow in life is by creating and promoting an environment of radical transparency. Even brand new employees at Bridgewater were encouraged to call him, the founder and CEO, to call him out when they thought he could be better. It's difficult to take criticism from a superior, let alone a subordinate. But Dalio says when you receive criticism, no matter from whom, the only thing that should matter to you at that point is discovering the truth. I think the only question is getting at whether it's true or not, right? You have to really want to find out if it's true or not and realize the benefits of finding out if it's true. Try to do it in an evidence-based way with the realization that you're going to be so much more successful and so much more happy if you do it. Dalio gives an example of himself going through this exact process, being called out by a subordinate who was encouraged to do so, seeking truth, and then honestly accepting and learning from his mistake. He says, I was in a client meeting with a big European pension fund that was visiting managers in Connecticut. After the meeting, the salesperson criticized me for being inarticulate, running on too long, and adversely affecting the meeting. I asked others who had been at the meeting for their opinions. I was given a grade of F by one of our new analysts who was just one year out of school. I loved it because I knew they were helping me improve and that they understood that was what they were supposed to be doing. This is by no means an easy skill to master and discipline to maintain throughout your life, but doing so, being honest with yourself and sincerely open to opposing viewpoints and criticism could be the key for your continued growth and long-term success. I hope to be able to help you with that however I can. So I hope you'll join us by subscribing and turning on notifications. I wish you all the best. Take care.